Hello and welcome to a new episode of History in 7 Facts, the show in which we explore some interesting episodes of humanity's past. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. The Kamikaze were a special group of pilots that fought for Japan in World War II. They carried out suicide attacks against Allied naval vessels in the Pacific. They were regarded as an expression of traditional values, loyalty and sacrifice. But was it so? In reality, the invention of this attack unit was nothing more than a military effort with the intent to make use of every unexperienced pilot. The instruction manual of a kamikaze pilot was simple, designed for beginners. They showed how to take off or how to pull the safety pins from the bombs they were carrying. They were advised to pee before taking off so they could focus on the mission. Nothing out of the ordinary, except that their mission was to fly their plane loaded with bombs directly into an enemy vessel. The Allied forces were frightened of these pilots and indeed regarded them as experienced soldiers. But they weren't. They were rookies, pawns in a desperate military plan devised by their superiors. By autumn of 1944, the Allies have shown their strength and superiority and Japan was losing. Badly. As the Allies were approaching the Philippines, the area became a crucial battlefield. If they could take it from the Japanese, they could use it as a launch base for their attacks on Japan. The Japanese couldn't face enemy pilots in conventional attacks. The number of experienced pilots was way too low for that. And the new pilots were rookies. And I mean really rookies. Their training was supposed to last a hundred days, but there was no time for that. Twenty-five days. That's how long their training lasted. That's barely enough to learn how to take off, let alone how to handle yourself in a dogfight. But Vice Admiral Takijiro Onishi came with a proposal to form a suicide offensive force, the Special Attack Unit. In a meeting on October 19, at an airfield near Manila, Onishi told officers of the 201st Flying Group Headquarters, I don't think there would be any other certain way to hold the Philippines than to put a 250kg bomb on a Zero and let it crash into a US carrier in order to disable her for a week. In Japanese, the formal term for the units carrying out suicide attacks was Tokubetsu Tokegitai, which literally means Special Attack Unit. This was usually abbreviated to Tokotai. But this new unit earned a different nickname, the Kamikaze. The word means Divine Wind and it originated from an ancient poem from 1281 that referred to a major typhoon that dispersed a Mongol invasion fleet that was about to attack Japan. The Japanese High Command was now hoping that these pilots would achieve a similar feat. The Kamikaze were often referred to as the Samurai of the Skies. The Samurai were the military nobility and officer caste of medieval and early modern Japan. They followed strict codes of honor, the Bushido Code, loyalty and honor until death. The Kamikaze pilots were presented to the nation as modern Samurai, ready to sacrifice themselves for the Emperor. Their missions were not viewed through military decisions, but through the Bushido Code. This idea of nobility caught on, and indeed many pilots were desperate to be picked for suicide runs. But in truth, there is little to no connection between the Samurai and the Kamikaze. The Samurai were an elite group of noblemen that trained their entire lives to master their trade. The Kamikaze were just a bunch of young rookies that were fooled into sacrificing their lives. The first Kamikaze squadron was formed from the 201st Flying Group, stationed in the Philippines. A 23-year-old lieutenant, Yukio Seki, received his order directly from Vice Admiral Onishi to lead the first attack. On October 25, 1944, American warships were attacked for the first time by suicide bombers near Samar Island. It is thought that Seki himself was the one to sing the American carrier St. Lowe. Seki's instruction manual was simple as I described earlier, but it also contained some creepy paragraphs. 
His sacrifice was described very poetically, something like this. The pilot should aim for a point between the bridge tower and the smokestacks. When they'll be just 2 to 3 meters from the target, they'll be so close that they will see through the barrel of the guns. And then they'll see their mother's face. Not crying, not smiling, just her everyday face. Right before the crash, they should shout at the top of their lungs, Hisatsu, meaning certain kill. Then, they will hear a last sound, like breaking glass. Now, that's just creepy, no matter how you put it. But these sacrifices weren't random. Pilots were told to attack only from the right angles. If they couldn't achieve that, they should return to base. But most didn't. Four out of five planes were usually shot down before they could reach their target. When the Japanese High Command saw the effectiveness of these attacks, they soon realized how important of a tool this was. They came up with new planes, the Yokosuka Oka, which were basically small, rocket-powered, human-guided bombs. The same principle of kamikaze was also employed in the Navy. Human-guided torpedoes, called Kaiten, were launched in the seas against Allied ships. In total, some 3,000 Americans died and 120 ships were destroyed by over 7,000 Japanese pilots. During the war, American soldiers were strictly forbidden to talk about the kamikaze to prevent demoralization of fresh troops. But the horrors would remain entrenched in their minds forever. But all those 7,000 pilots didn't actually follow the Bushido code, but a military strategy. Traditional Japanese values stated that fighting until death is honorable, but suicide was actually reserved for those who dishonored themselves. There's one more thing to say about the kamikaze. As I said, many pilots implored their commanders to be selected as kamikaze. But not all of them. In fact, many, if not most, were in doubt and fear. Saburo Sakai, one of Japan's best pilots, stated after the war that it was all a lie. The kamikaze pilots weren't begging for the honor to die. Nobody wants to die. They simply received their orders and were forced to execute them. But the fact is, we will never know how many of these pilots felt this way. Neither the pilots nor their commanders dared to speak up. The press was heavily censored, so there was a complete lack of criticism. But let's take the letter of Goro Nagamine as an example. Before his mission, he wrote, I ask myself if I am ready, and I answer yes, I'm ready to leave. But at the same time, I can't stop screaming. I don't want to die. It was customary for the pilots to leave a letter of goodbye. When they finished it, they would leave it with their belongings that were already labeled with their names and their status. Dead. And it was all in vain. On August 16, 1945, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki were nuked, Emperor Hirohito surrendered and Japan lost the war. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Facts. I hope this was interesting and informative and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you like this video, please, thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a Patron. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.